All right, this is part two of the Hardhead Veterans ATE helmet upgrade. I've got the uh, Comtech XPIs right over here. We're going to be connecting those uh, with these uh, rail adapters from Hardhead Veteran. I got these just because uh, they're M-Lock compatible and work with the rails that are on there. Uh, other than that, I just didn't feel like spending the money on different rails, but we'll see how they work. Uh, next, the uh, Disco 32 push to talk. Uh, if you're using, like I have here, this Yaesu uh, FT65, you're going to want to get the, uh, I believe it was the Motorola M1 uh, adapter. They've got they've got ones for all different kinds of uh, comms from Beofangs and everything else. But that was the uh, one that particularly works with that FC65. So let's get started. So here's the model of the uh, Comtac uh, XPI I got. Got it from, uh, shipped over from the UK. And uh, it works because I've plugged it and tested it. And let's uh, let's get that going. Now I've already disassembled the headset from the uh, headband. Uh, what you'll start with is there's this, uh, this one has the uh, leather wrapped. So you'll just undo the stitching. I just used a pocket knife to break the uh, stitching and it came right apart. And because you've got uh, your wiring uh, runs along this headband here. So when you're taking these off, um, you have these arms, they just pop onto these notches right here. So you'll just turn them 90 degrees and pop them out. And as far as taking them off here, uh, you'll just twist while you pull and they'll hit their notch and they'll come right out. So real easy to do. Just don't force it, put too much muscle in it so you don't break it. Just kind of twist and just kind of keep constant tension on it. All right, I use a uh, 3 30 seconds Allen key to put those on. Uh, doesn't really give you much uh, wiggle room as far as adjustment. You pretty much just center it on between the uh, two M-lock slots and stick it on there. There's not really much wiggle room to adjust it front or back. So I hope that uh, hope that's a one size fits all or at most. We'll find out. Okay, I've got the little ears or clips or whatever you want to call on there. Um, this wire may be just tiny slightly bit larger diameter than the ones on the headset because it did take a little bit of extra effort pushing those on um makes you feel at first like you're about to snap them off but just just keep that uh, constant pr uh, pressure applied and it will uh, it'll slip over with a little bit of extra work um one thing you want to take in consideration is this wiring where is it going to go uh, i started to put all this together and then realized wait my wire was going to be wrapped under here so i had to redo that um Gonna work it a little bit more. I'm you gotta be careful because I don't want to break this here. Uh, when you're coming in, you know, again, you gotta come at them basically sideways instead of the way they're gonna sit because the uh, notch here is narrower, as you can see right here, than it is there. So you're gonna snap them in from that side. The best way I've found to snap these on is to when you get them lined up, keep pressure on the the little tab itself while pushing here and you do it like that it snaps on a lot easier than instead of trying to just push down from here so having leverage on both sides is snapped together really easy and for some reason the side with the mic was a pain in the butt um it just kept not wanting to align i guess with all these swiveling parts and extra weight it just is you got to get it really lined up uh perpendicular here um, otherwise it wants to flop to one side or the other and doesn't want to clip in, but a little bit of work on that and just being patient and not trying too hard so you don't break it and you'll get it in there. All right, got the contacts mounted. All good there. Now we've got our, uh, Disco 32 push to talk. And we're just going to plug it into this down lead here and then we'll connect it to our radio. All right, we've got all that connected, and let's test out. All right, it receives good. I do know for a fact that it will transmit. Um, when it comes to that, that's a question of, of course, uh, ham licensing. So um, 
if you're going to transmit on one of these type radios, uh, you may want to look into getting a ham license. Um, technically, you can transmit in an emergency situation without a, anything, but uh, again, that's going to be a personal decision on your part. And uh, that's all we've got on that. Next thing I've got to figure out is uh, cable management here. This wire kind of hanging out of back. I think for right now, I'm going to just put this uh, counterweight in the back and see if that kind of tidies it up a little bit. Um, might end up getting a helmet cover or something. Something to tie it off a little bit better. Cover it up. All right, so I ended up using the counterweight to help tidy up the, the cables. Um, I'm sure there's better solutions out there, but that's kind of what I'm doing for now. Uh, if I find a better solution, I'll, I'll definitely do an update on the video for that. But uh, this is what we've got. And uh, that's pretty much it for part two. I appreciate everybody that's watching. And, uh, you know, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I know I uh, haven't done that many videos in a while, but uh, definitely going to start doing more. Uh, now that I've been able to uh, free up a little bit of time to do more and I've acquired more stuff to do videos on. And uh, thanks again for everybody that's watching.